All right. Hey, people. Stats people. Say hey, hey, hey. Hey, guys. So I'm going to try to summarize all the key things from Chapter 2 in just one problem. I'm going to try to do it quickly. So let's get going. All right. So here we have a problem that says, ah, baby. Ooh, hold on. Emergency. Sorry, man. It's okay. Um, it says the distribution of scores on a recent test closely followed a normal distribution with a mean of 22 points and a standard deviation of 4 points. What proportion of the students scored at least 25 points on this test? All right. So let's start off by drawing a sketch of a normal curve. And let's just briefly review the basic breakdown of a normal curve. That being that one standard deviation to the left and right covers 68% of the area. Two standard deviations to the left and right will then give us... 95% and three away will be 99.7. Have this rule memorized, the 68.95.99.7 rule. Now, here we have a mean of 22 and a standard deviation of four points. So mu is 22, sigma is 4, and we want to find the proportion of scores that were 25 or more. So the probability that a score, that a score x was greater than or equal to 25 in a normal distribution where the mean is 22 and a standard deviation of 4, Standard deviation is four. That means we're basically trying to find the area to the right of something like this. So we want to find this area. That's our goal. So um, we can standardize this or we can use our calculator because it's faster and it's quicker and it's cooler. So um, let's remember the syntax. We can go to um, normal CDF. And then Old school calculators, you got to memorize the whole thing. So we're going, the lower bound is going to be 25. Then you got to press comma. Upper bound is enter like a billion, enter a very big number. Followed by the mean and standard deviation. So followed by 22 comma 4. So this is the lower. Well, I heard a fireworks go off. Lower, upper, mean. Standard deviation. So um, that's what that is. Um, again, if you have a newer calculator, it just has that typed into the calculator, so you can you can easily know what to write. Um, all right, so let's run this calculation. So we go to distribution, normal CDF, lower twenty five, upper twenty two comma four, and we're gonna get a probability of about point. 2266 of a 0.227. It's about 22.7% of the students got scores of 25 or more. Nice. All right. Um, part B, what's the 31st percentile of the distribution of test scores? So remember what a percentile is. Percentile is kind of like the opposite we just did. Well, it's still just an area. So you want to find the value of x such that there's 31 percent or an area of 0.31 to the left of it because that means that the students scored more than 31 percent of the other students so we want to find the value that would work here so then um there's two ways to go about it you can standardize it or you can go straight to what we have with these values now the cool way to go about this is using what's called an inverse norm function in your calculator. Inverse norm. Open the parentheses. You're going to type basically the area to the left, 0.31, followed by the mean and standard deviation. So followed by 22, 4. So area to left, mean, variation. Again, if you have the newer version calculators, it just says that in the function, so it's easy to know what to type in. Inverse norm. 
So 0 0.31 comma 22 comma 4. And we get right about 20.01. We'll go about, we'll go around to 20.02. So a score of about 20 will be in the 31 percentile. And this end is capitalized in my calculator. All right, moving right along, part C. The teacher wants to transform the test score so that they have an approximately normal distribution with a mean of 80 points and standard deviation of 10 points. To do this, she will use the form new score equals A plus B times the old score. So let me, hey, Pam, I'm gonna have to excuse you for a minute. Let me get some of these paper towels. Back you go. Okay, I'm gonna erase something. No, let me erase this. Because I wanna write clearly, I'll be quick. Okay, so we got a um. So a new score, let's write that as y equals a plus b times the old score, which is just x. So x is the old score, y is the new score. Now, with the original, um, let me check, I forgot the original um, values of the mean and standard deviation are 22 and four. So let's write the original sigma of x was four. Mu of x was 22. So we're going to find b first because whenever you transform um, a standard deviation, all you have to do is multiply. Multiplying is the only thing that you need to do. You don't have to add it because, because standard deviation is a measure of spread. Think about like um, if you're going to change your height from feet to like inches. Um, you, would, you would multiply your height. Let's say I'm six feet. If I multiply that by 12, that's going to be inches. I don't have to add anything because um, I'm just changing how spread out they are. Um, or think of like this distance from, from four to six is two, right? Four to six is two. But if I multiplied every value by five, it would be like from 10, 10 to 20. I don't have to add it. I just multiply that two by five. Anyways, let's not ramble too much. So all we do here to find the new standard deviation of y, you just go b times 4. She wants the new standard deviation to be, what, 10? So 10 is equal to b times 4, or 4 times b. So b is then going to be 2.5. Now I can plug this into there and just solve for a a plus 2.5x. Now to find A, I can plug in the old mean. So the old mean was 22, and she wants the new mean to be 80. So I can put 80 equals A plus 2.5 times the old mean, or times 22. That'll be, what, what is that, 22 and a half, 44, 55? 25? Oh man, I can't. 25 minutes. 80 minus 2.5 times 22 is 25. A bang. And so here are my values 2.5 and 25. Um, yeah, there we go. And last part before the test, the teacher gave a review assignment for homework. The maximum score on the assignment was 10 points. The distribution of scores on this assignment had a mean of 9.2 points and a standard deviation of 2.1 points. Would it be appropriate to use a normal distribution to calculate the portion of students who scored below seven points on the assignment? Okay, so the maximum score was 10 points. The mean was 9.2. Standard deviation was 2.1. Okay, so this is not going to be it. I can already tell, but let's just draw a visual. Remember, normal distribution has to follow this principle. The mean has to be in the center such that you can basically count three standard deviations away in the positive and negative direction, and those values should still be like within the population. So if the mean is 9.2, let's say, 
let's draw let's just cite, let's just draw a bell curve. And the standard deviation is 2.1. Just one standard deviation away will be 9.2 plus 2.1, which is 9.10, 11.3. Hell no, this ain't even close because if I want to go three away, three standard deviation away, that'll be 13.4. 13.4, and then the third one will be 15.5, so you can way off. Values could maybe fit on the left, but this is not going to, this ain't going to work. It's ain't no normal distribution. Um, yeah, so there we go. So um, I hope that was helpful. I just went over 10 minutes, but it was worth it. Say bye-bye, Pepe. Bye, guys. Good luck, guys. Make sure you subscribe if you found this helpful, and I'm hoping that you guys give me some more valuable info and feedback is always welcome. See you guys later.